We'll look in this lesson at saving text to files. And we'll look at how we can do it using right line, using write, look at how we can append or add to files, and then look at how we can use a save file dialog. As we look first at right line, we're going to need to add some stuff at the top because we're needing a stream writer and that exists in system.io. So up at the top, we have to say using system.io for input output. Now we'll have access to a stream writer, which is what we're going to need in order to write to a file. In fact, that's what we're going to be doing in just a moment. Let's set up a try catch in case there's an issue trying to actually create the file. So here's a try and a catch. I'll put exception EX. It doesn't really matter if what you use for the EX, but you need to have that exception class there. All right, now in the try part, we'll create a stream writer object. I'll call it output file. You could call it whatever you want. And then output file equals file dot create text. That means it's going to create a new file. And in the parentheses, we need to put a string that will be the name of the file. And I'll call it cities.txt. And then we're going to write some cities to the file with output file dot write line. And I'll just take care of four cities. You can do as many cities as you want. But all with output file dot write line. The key is dot write line. Whatever we called our stream writer, it's that object dot write line. And then very important, we need to close the file. We'll discuss that a little bit later on. So got to close the file. And we might want to give the users a message to let them know that this file was successfully written. So we'll just tell them that cities.txt has been successfully created. In the catch, we'll have a message box and then ex.message. ex is an exception object and if there's a, an issue, that object will be able to relay specifically what the problem was. There's multiple issues that could come up. All right. Let's run this program and see if we actually get a file to go. We'll click on the button. It says that cities.txt has been successfully created. Let's go hunt it down. It's in the bin folder. So we're going to go, you notice up at the top, it says local to C, users, my name, my first name is Scott, then source and REPOS, just as you've seen often throughout this class. You get into your solution folders and then we got to keep going inside. There's bin. Here's debug, and finally, we're going to get to, hey, there's cities. We'll double click on that, and it'll probably open up a notepad for you, and there are the cities listed in a text file, one on each line. If we change these cities, I'll change all four of them, and then run the program again, because it's create text, it will create a new file, and it will overwrite what was there. It will not add to what was there. It will overwrite it. So create text. If it didn't exist before, it will create it and put it there. If it was there, it's going to get overwritten. The old cities are not there, just the new ones from this next run of the program. Again, create text does that. If the file doesn't already exist, it's going to make a brand new one. If it already does exist, too bad, it's going to overwrite it. We'll learn later on how we can check to see if a file already exists or not. Now let's see what happens when we use write instead of write line. So again, I'll set up the try catch and I will copy a lot of this stuff here to save maybe some typing. We'll see if it was a good idea or not. We still are going to have a streamwriter output file. We'll change the name of the file to states.txt. That's a string inside those uh, parentheses. And then everywhere it said write line, we're going to have it just say write. So get rid of those lines and then put in some states. I did four states. You could do as many as you want. And we'll change the message down at the bottom to say that states.txt has been successfully created. So let's see what happens when we use write every time instead of write line. We'll click on the button. The file has been created. We'll hunt it down. It's in the bin folder and it's going to come up here by default. There's states. And you notice there's, because the line thing wasn't there, there are no new line characters. They are just one right after the other. And maybe that's what you'll want. So if you need everything on a new line, use right line. If you don't, use 
right. Here's why it's very important to close the file. I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to call this states2.txt. I'll get rid of closing the file, and it's very easy to forget to do that. I uh, will let the users know that states2.txt has been successfully created. We'll press the button to make that happen. The file was created. We'll go take a look, and it's got zero kilobytes in it because there's nothing in there. Nothing was written. And you might think, hey, we said dot write. Why didn't anything happen? Well, imagine if we had a pile of 500 books that we need to move from one room in the school out to a car in the parking lot, and you were helping me. If you only take one book at a time, that's going to be 500 trips to the car. You're probably going to take as many books as you possibly can each time and then get to the car and unload the books. That's what happens here. We're actually writing to a buffer. We don't actually write to a disk or a flash drive or wherever every single time we say to write a write line. It writes to a buffer, and when it's full, just like when you've got all the books you can handle, it will dump them into the file. When we close the file, it forces whatever is sitting in the buffer to be unloaded. And when we ran this program without closing it, the buffer never got close to full, so it never dumped anything out. So that's why it's very important to close a file it makes the buffer dump what it has. Let's look at appending a file now. That means adding to the end of what's there. So where we have, you notice I did some copying and pasting, but the key thing is changing create text to append text. If the file doesn't exist, it will create a new one. But if it does exist, it will add to the end of it. So we're going to add a city to the end of the file, or append. We're going to get that city from a text box that you saw in the form. So I'll make a variable called new city, and it will equal whatever the users typed into the text box. And that's what we want to write to the file, or we're actually going to use write line. So I'll put file, that's the name of our stream writer, dot write line, that's the method we want. And what we want to write is new city. And we'll give the users a different message down here to let them know that that new city has been added to the file. And again, the big change here is append text. If the file didn't already exist, it would create a new one. But if the file already does exist, it will add to the end of it. Let's see if it works. Remember, there's already four cities in the file. So I'll type in Louisville, and Louisville's been successfully appended. Let's go check it out. Oh, I need to get the text out of that text box. But there it is. At the end of the file, Louisville was added. Kind of irritating that people would have to clear that out of the text box. So I'm going to add a little code to clear the text box. And I'll also put the focus right back into the text box. Not sure if that's a good idea or not, but for now it is because I want to keep typing some cities in. So with dot clear and dot focus, now there's five cities in the file. Let's put in some more, and you can put in whatever cities you want. I'll throw in Phoenix and Atlanta and Montreal. And we'll check it out. And they have been appended or added to the end of the file. The key is when you have file dot either append text or create text. Now let's look at how we can use a save file dialog. We have to actually get one of those from the toolbox. So we'll double click on that and it shows up at the bottom as save file dialog one. I'm going to change its name to save file. If you want to use a three letter prefix, it would probably be SFD. Um, but I'm just going to call it save file. And it is that at the bottom you see that. So we'll double click on that button and set up a try catch again. Although you'll notice that the save file dialog can take care of some of this stuff itself. You'll notice that later on. So if save file dot show dialog with parentheses, remember save file is our save file dialog object dot show dialog forces the dialog box to show up. If it is equivalent to dialog result dot okay, 
will do one thing. In fact, we'll tell them that they clicked save. Because there will be two buttons they could pick, save or cancel. So we'll tell them that they clicked save. Otherwise, we'll figure that the, it was the cancel. So we'll let them know. All right. Notice that a dialog box shows up. By default, it's going to go to documents. We can make it go somewhere else, but that's the default. If I click cancel, it says you click cancel. If I type in a name of a file, I'll call it test and click save. You click save. If I try to click save and don't put the name of a file in there, if I leave that blank, the save file dialog is not going to do anything. As I said, it can catch a little bit of its own, its own exceptions. So I actually have to put something in there to save it. All right, let's make an array of numbers. I'm going to use some doubles. You can use whatever you like. Uh, I'll have them be test scores. I'll just pop in a bunch of scores there. And we will then be able to use a loop to put those into a file. Got to make a stream writer object. Again, I'll call it output file. And output file, I'm going to create text. So file.create text. And then in parentheses has to be a string with the file name. Well, that file name is in the save file dialog. So it's save file dot file name. That will return whatever file name got typed into that dialog box. So again, in parentheses is a string that is the name of the file. We had that earlier. Cities.txt, notice it's in quotation marks. That argument is a string. We could use a regular for loop or a for each loop. I'll use a for each loop because we want to hit everything in the array and it doesn't matter what the index is. So I'll say for each double score and test scores. So score will uh, become a copy of every single value in the array test scores. And I want to put that into the file. So I'll say output file dot right line score because score is eventually going to become every single that value inside the test scores array. And of course, very important, make sure you close the file. It's very easy to forget to do that. Uh, when I'm writing a lot of programs with a lot of files, I sometimes, as soon as I create the file, I type to close the file and then put a bunch of space in between to put all the rest of the code. Um, it's super easy to forget to close the file. So just try not to forget to do that. And if you are not getting what you expect in a file, make sure you actually have closed it. All right, I uh, will show you at a later time how you can choose a type. Uh, you're probably used to seeing file types down there. For now, we're gonna have to actually put a type in there, .txt. And we'll see if that actually showed up in the documents folder. And there's numbers with all the test scores. And of course, with a save file dialog, you can pick where you want to go. I left it in documents by default, but you have the option to hunt around wherever you want to go on your computer. You might want to mess with that as you keep testing this program.